2022 Audi R8 V10 Performance RWD First Test, on the brink of extinction. The freshly refreshed 2022 Audi R8 is among the last of a car breed that is not merely dying, but pretty well dead, the naturally aspirated supercar. To drive it on a curvy road is to live out an ages-old sports car fantasy of instantaneous power, Velcro-like grip, and the ability to snap the tail out at will, all to the accompaniment of an 8,700 RPM V10 screaming out a song you'll hear in your dreams for years to come. Given the coming rarity of cars like this, it's easy to overlook the R8's flaws. We'll try our best not to get sappy, but forgive us a little sentimentality along the way. Audi R8 V-10, end of an era, the R8's centerpiece is its 5.2-litre V10, which not only lacks any sort of electrification but doesn't even have turbochargers. Wait, why did we write that word in the plural? Because in the context of supercars, multiple turbos are the norm. Not here. The rear-drive version of the R8 serves up its 562 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque, up 30 horsepower and 8 pound-feet from the 2021 rear-drive model while relying on nothing but its piston's ability to create suction on the intake stroke. This is power made the old-fashioned way, provided you're young enough to consider direct fuel injection and variable valve timing old-fashioned. Even the cabin is a bit of a throwback. Most notable is its lack of a center screen. When was the last time you saw a car without one of those? Mind you, the 2022 Audi R8 does have moving map navigation and a backup camera. It's old-fashioned but not primitive, with displays on the instrument cluster. No Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, though. After all, we're here to drive, not to play subway surfers. If all that isn't puritanical enough for you, consider the fact that the R8s we drove, both coupe and convertible versions, though we only put the former through our test process, don't even have all-wheel drive. Quattro-equipped R8s are even more powerful, offering 602 horsepower and 413 pound-feet, and with shorter ratios in the seven-speed twin-clutch transmission's top five gears. On the test track, RWD versus AWD, does the 2022 Audi R8 RWD's power deficit make a difference? It did at the test track. We engaged the most aggressive chassis setting, called Performance Dry, oh, those Germans, so literal, and launch mode, which held the engine revs just north of 3000 for the launch. The R8 was off like a rocket. 60 miles per hour came up in 3.2 seconds. That's an impressive number, but it loses a bit of its luster when you realize the last all-wheel drive R8 performance we tested did the run in 2.6. We're sure we lost some time to the very audible wheel spin, but we thought the drama was a worthwhile trade-off for the slower pace. The R8 Coupe we tested was equipped with the $12,900 dynamic package, which notably sharpened its responses on the road and in our handling tests. We measured 0.98 grams, average, of lateral grip on the skid pad and set a lap of 23.8 seconds at 0.83 grams through our figure 8 course, trailing the all-wheel drive version by just 0.3 second. The chassis balance was magical, with minimal understeer, nary a threat of oversteer, and just a slight wiggle slide of the tail on corner exit. The track-oriented carbon ceramic brakes warmed up quickly and drew the coupe down from 60 miles per hour in 112 feet. Does the R8 need the dynamic package? Along with the coupe, we sampled a convertible R8 performance spider that lacked the dynamic package, and we were surprised, and not entirely displeased, at the differences between the two chassis setups. The dynamic-equipped coupe is a true sports car, with a notably firmer ride and better control of body movements over bumps. No matter which mode we chose, the R8 coupe stayed firmly planted, even with performance dry mode selected, but it swung its tail out when driven aggressively. However, outside of the test track, we apparently didn't drive aggressively enough to keep the brakes at an ideal temperature. They felt rather grabby, reminding us that sometimes track-oriented performance features are best left at the track. Our coupe test car also featured the $1,400 dynamic steering system, which alters the steering ratio based on speed. A noble idea, perhaps, but poorly executed. We found if we drove too close to the speed where the ratios switch, 
the steering could be unpredictable, and we had no idea how much, or little, input we'd have to give. Without the dynamic package, the R8 Spider was more of a Grand Tourer. Although its structure felt stiff as a girder, the ride was significantly softer than that of the coupe, to the point that the dampers sometimes had a difficult time keeping body motions in check. Selecting performance dry mode stiffened up the suspension noticeably, and in the Spider it made a big difference in chassis balance. When it was switched on, the R8 Spider would happily swing out its tail. Switched off, the car stayed on course like an all-wheel drive Audi. Without the dynamic steering and ceramic brakes, the car had better wheel and pedal feel at our more tepid real-world pace. The dynamic package is a must-have for those who take their R8 to the track, but if you want it for the streets, you might choose to give it a pass. Either way, we recommend steering clear of the dynamic steering package. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.